Thank you for this introduction. The topic of my presentation is the role of transcatheter aortic valve replacement in patients with aortic stenosis and bicuspid aortic valves in 2023. Here are my disclosures related to this presentation. I'm a speaker for Medtronic. There are significant differences uh, between bicuspid aortic valve and tricuspid aortic valve as it is shown here. The disease progresses faster and earlier in life in patients with bicuspid aortic valve in comparison with tricuspid aortic valve. And in addition to that, uh, calcification uh, develops uh, earlier as far as leaflets are concerned and progressive dilatation of the ascending aorta. There are several known unfavorable features as far as bicuspid aortic valve is concerned for uh, consideration for TAVR. One of the important thing is that the annulus is more elliptical and there is frequent symmetrical calcification present of the aortic valve, as well as present or presence of a left ventricular arthral calcification, shorter distance of the annulus uh, to uh, the coronary arteries, and also uh, dilatation of the ascending uh, aorta and more frequent horizontal aorta. There is also a significant challenge as far as uh, measurements and methodologies concerned for patients with bicuspid aortic valve. What is a more accurate measurement? Is it annular? Is it supraannular? Or is it using a sizing balloon as shown here on the right-hand side? There are several classifications available for bicuspid aortic valve disease. And uh, as shown here, published by Yoon and co-workers in Jack 2020, we can see that this particular classification also adds meaningful information as far as death from any cause according to the morphological features. On the left-hand side, we can see a relatively mild form of uh, calcification of the leaflets uh, and uh, no calcified raphe. And on the right-hand side, we can more, see more advanced com complex scenario where we have a calcified raphe plus uh, excess leaflet calcification. The center one is the most common one as far as uh, frequency of this abnormality is concerned. And in their publication, as we can see, a two-year follow-up, there is a significant difference as far as mortality is concerned, shown in the red line for patients with uh, more severe disease where the mortality is more than twice as high at two years. The important thing is as far as potential consequences are concerned of extensive leaflet and or calcification. There is more need for predilatation in those patients. There is a higher risk of systemic embolization. There is also risk of suboptimal valve expansion. There is also potential need for post-deployment dilatation. And uh, there might be a higher risk of valve dislodgement as far as higher risk of annular or aortic uh, rupture is concerned. Here we can see a scenario where a calcified raphe and extensive leaflet calcification can pose a significant risk of perivalvular leak as shown here in this particular uh, scenario and simulation. Now, as far as uh, left ventricular outflow tract calcification is concerned, using a simulation and artificial intelligence uh, technology, we can see that uh, uh, the risk of rupture of the annulus and the incidence of perivalvular leak can be predicted accurately using this uh, technology, as shown in this particular example. Here's one of our patients using artificial intelligence, DASI simulation, in a patient with a significant uh, outflow tract calcification and extensive eccentric calcification of the annulus using both balloon expandable valve in simulation and self-expandable valve. And we can see how those valves perform during a simulation. The important thing in this particular scenario that the risk using artificial intelligence was significantly higher for balloon expandable valve showing in this simulation uh, image red area that is at risk of significant uh, uh, calcification and annular rupture. So as far as other uh, potential risks are concerned, pelvivalvular leak is one of them that's very important. We can see that as far as balloon expandable valve is concerned, 
the risk is very low. However, with self-expandable valve on the right-hand side, we can see the risk of perivalvular leak is significantly higher. So what happened in this particular patient using artificial intelligence? We uh, elected to uh, place a self-expandable valve because of the potential risk of annular rupture that was suggested by our use of artificial intelligence. In this particular scenario, there were no procedural complications. And as far as hospital echo is concerned, there was mild perivalvular leak. And at one month of follow-up, echo showed persistent mild perivalvular leak. So the artificial intelligence and DASI simulation accurately predicted perivalvular leak in this particular patient. What about clinical trials for bicuspid aortic stenosis and TAVR? There is a no randomized clinical trial for this particular scenario. However, TAVR is approved treatment for bicuspid aortic valve and aortic stenosis. And I believe that there is a very unlikely scenario that there will be ever done a randomized trial because the procedure is approved and this is occurring on everyday scenario. What about TAVR versus SAVR outcomes of concern in patients with bicuspid aortic valve? Here in this meta-analysis, uh, we can look at several aspects analyzed uh, related to uh, 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 surgery versus uh, TAVR is concerned. And we can see that as far as 30-day uh, incidence of a permanent pacemaker or 30-day mortality is concerned or one-year mortality, there was no difference between surgery versus TAVR in this particular scenario. However, there was significant difference occurred uh, as far as 30-day uh, residual regurgitation is concerned, which was higher in patients with uh, TAVR and bicuspid aortic stenosis. What about uh, bicuspid aortic valve versus tricuspid aortic valve and TAVR outcomes are concerned? We can see that uh, in this uh, registry, which is one of the largest registry reported so far, as far as uh, mortality and stroke is concerned, and that was ACC TVT registry with uh, over uh, 81,000 patients, we can see using a propensity score match pairs that uh, there was no difference in mortality at 30 days uh, between two groups. However, at 30 day, a uh, stroke rate was higher in patients with a cuspid aortic valve in comparison with patients with tri-leaflet valve and aortic stenosis is concerned. Finally, I would like to share with you as far as TAVR outcomes are concerned for patients with a cuspid aortic valve, comparing balloon expandable valve versus self-expandable valve. We can see we have here listed four different studies. Now there are single center uh, studies and they are not randomized studies. Some of them look at Evolute and some of them look at Sapien and some of them look at Sapien and Evolute uh, outcomes are concerned. We can see uh, in the study by Forrest and co-workers published in Jack 2020, that uh, as far as outcomes are concerned in patients that had Evolute valve placed, there was more need for reintervention in patients with a cuspid aortic valve versus tri-leaflet aortic valve. Raj Makar and co-workers uh, look at Sapien 3 uh, patients uh, with uh, over 2,600 patients included at 30 days and one year follow-up, and the stroke rate was higher at 30 days and also at one year in patients with bicuspid aortic valve. Also, another study with Sapien 3 valve by Kavar Mori, we can see there was, uh, in this particular study, using Sapien data, no difference in mortality, stroke, or need for permanent pacemaker or gradients of concern. However, in the last study on the bottom, comparing a Sapien 3 and Evolute in more than 7,000 patients at 30 days and one year, we can see that uh, patients with bicuspid aortic valve had higher risk of conversion to surgery, need for second valve implant, incidence of perivalvular leak, and device failure. In addition to that, they found that balloon expandable valves had lower rate of second valve placement 
and pacemaker need, but higher rate of annular rupture. So which patients with bicuspid aortic valve at the present time are still better candidates for surgery? Definitely patients that are younger, patients that need mechanical valve, patients that have extensive coronary circulation or significant aortic dilatation, multivalvular disease, unfavorable calcification pattern and risk of annular rupture, patients at risk of perivalvular regurgitation, and also patients with uh, iliofemoral challenging anatomy, low coronary arteries or anomalous coronary artery origin. So in conclusion, Tavern in patients with a bicuspid aortic stenosis still poses significant challenges due to aortic valve disease complexity in this particular subgroup of patients and frequently associated aerthopathy. Uh, associated aerthopathy, however, is uh, somewhat less concern in patients that are at high surgical risk and particularly in older patients. Uh, current generation devices uh, are uh, offering satisfactory results uh, using proper technologies and the techniques, particularly with the use of artificial intelligence, uh, and the need for reintervention has been decreasing, particularly related to incidence of rupture and incidence of perivalvular leak. So finally, artificial intelligence, as we have shown, uh, helps significantly identifying the patients that are at, pot at potential risk for any complication and selecting proper size of the valve for the procedure. However, there is a need for long-term follow-up of TAVR patients with this pathology and improvement as far as devices are concerned to prevent complications such as rupture of the annulus and also incidence of perivalvular leak. Thank you very much for your attention.